Recruiting in the age of Googleization, it's changed a great deal. So we're going to talk about how things used to be, how they are now, and it was a great question in the back, what do you do when you're trying to recruit uh, college students these days? Isn't Facebook the big thing? And the reality is, no, it's changed. Things change very rapidly. Uh, it took, and this is a kind of a meme that's gone out, and there's some, there's a lot of truth to it, but it gives you some context. It took 38 years to get 50 million people to listen to a radio. It only took 13 years to get 15, 50 million people to watch TV. It took five million people, or five years to get 50 million people on the internet. It took three years to get 50 million people to use an iPod, which doesn't even, basically doesn't exist anymore. Um, the iPad, by the way, when you think about how rapidly things change, the iPad is only six years old and how it's revolutionized everything. It only took 35 days to get 50 million people on Angry Birds. <laughs> One version of Angry Birds. So things changed pretty rapidly between then and now. So just because you say, well, this is, we revamped our system last year. And it doesn't matter if I'm talking about recruiting or any other part of your business, whether it's about you're selling whatever you sell, it changes pretty quickly. So here's a then and now. How many people saw Intern, the movie Intern? Okay. If you haven't seen it, watch it because it's a, it's a great, it's, it's a funny video and it's good. It's with Anne Hathaway and Robert De Niro, um, but it, it basically is the, the two generations clashing. This is what it used to look like. Now most of the people in the room are a little older than that, but I remember getting through high school and college graduation. I got quite a few briefcases. Okay, um, that's the new briefcase. So what's it look like now? This is what used to be in it: pen and paper, calculator, maybe. We used to have the phone on the desk, a dial-up phone. Here's what it looks like now. That's the inside, and, and half of it can stick in your pocket, which. You know, I've got chargers and I've got wires, and that you don't even need a uh, you don't even need a backpack. Okay, had the opportunity to go see the Pope when he was in Philly. Uh, <coughs> got tickets for it. I'm standing there. We went very very early. We're right around the circle, and look to the right, look to the left. A peer of mine. I don't know who he is, but you know, someone probably 50, 60 years old, baby boomer, doing crossword puzzles, pen and paper. <coughs> Welcome to the 21st century. That's what it looks like. Okay. That is our mobile phone. Okay. That's obviously changed quite a bit. That was our computer. You know, you started it up, you walked away for a half an hour, and then you heard it. And, and now that's where we are now, and that's how you apply. Here's the problem with most people. They're still sitting at their desktop, thinking about, hey, we're going to post an ad to Indeed, we're going to post an ad anywhere, we're going to publicize our company, and that's how it's going to get received. It's not getting on here. Most people don't own, have a keyboard that they pull out, I mean, you can get the Bluetooth keyboards, but most people are trying to do most of their functions, at least initially, including job search and shopping. Again, this applies to everybody in the room who sells products on a five inch screen. And if you can't see it, you can't fill out the forms, they're gone. Texting <laughs> and texting. Okay. So let's put all this in the context. This was a great picture. Basically is, I, I, I forgot to bring it, but it's a three and a half inch floppy drive. How many people remember, how many people have never used a three and a half inch floppy drive? The couple hands almost went up, okay? Five and a quarter. It, or five and a quarter, yeah, or how many, how many people actually have 33 and a third final records? Uh, but the reality is, is there's a new venue out there. It's an icon, it's cool. Here's the icon that we see on, in Word, or in a document, and you did a 3D printing different mindset, and we forget about those things because they were second nature to us. 
and we have drawers filled with them. So we see, you know, we see them and we hate to get rid of them because there's a good file that's still possibly left on there. So what does this mean for you? And again, remember that everything I'm talking about here, I've actually taken this from marketing into recruiting. But the reality is, if you're, re if you're marketing a product, a service, or you're looking for employees, it's the same thing. It's the same model. Everything you've learned from Kelly and Valerie and what you're, we're going to talk about with what Jeff's going to talk about in a few minutes, I was going to all relate to the same. Okay. So 1996 called it, and once it's recruiting model back. Okay. Recruiting interruptus, it's a syndrome that's affecting most companies. Okay. One is old recruiting processes don't work. Um, you're doing it the same old way. The assumption is we posted at, we took our job description, cut and paste, posted on Indeed, and our problem solved because it's going to go out to millions and millions of people. Problem is it attracts too few, few, too few qualified candidates. If you've ever marketed on any of the venues, uh, if you think you, you have to use social media, but if you think you're going to use social media to attract more qualified candidates, you also have to accept this impact that it's going to have on resources because you're going to get a lot of unqualified people that think that they would like to work for your company. It doesn't matter that, they, that you need a four-year engineering degree and they have, they're, haven't graduated high school yet. You're still going to get them, and how do you quickly weed those out? So basically, sourcing is, is out of sync. Um, again, great question that was, that was asked to Valerie, is what happens when Facebook, if we put it on Facebook, we don't get a response? Well, if you're marketing toward uh, anyone under 22 years old, realize Facebook was started 12 years ago. That's an eternity for some type of media these days. So it, it's, it occurred so long ago that now we do have Snapchat, and you have Instagram, and you have Periscope, and you have Vine. These are, these are other media that have to be utilized, so you have to understand your market. Except to understand your market, you basically got to throw out this wide net. You got to use them all almost simultaneously. If you don't have an infrastructure on the back end, if you don't have some type of process, you're going to get overwhelmed. You're going to have people on all these media, and that's ultimately, you have to throw out a wide net, but you also have to have a process behind it. So, came up with an acronym uh, called REACH, R-E-A-C-H, of how to recruit more qualified people in a faster time. So, te technically, when you're looking for qualified people, whether it's that you're looking for somebody that has customer service skills, or you're looking for somebody that has specific uh, engineering skills, or math skills, or science skills, or technology skills, or programming skills, whatever it might be, you're looking for that needle in the haystack. The problem is, it's that big of a haystack, <laughs> and with all the different media, it's in piles of haystacks. We think our haystack's little, and it's not, because everyone is competing for talent. So, let's translate our haystack. This is what it looks like. All these things work to some degree, and mostly they don't work to lots of degrees. So you have to basically throw, a, a, kind of attach each of these, and look toward each of these and understand them. And because most companies don't have the metrics to understand what's the best, is, is indeed better than career builder? Should we be doing LinkedIn instead of Facebook? The answer is it depends. If you don't try them, you don't know. And it may be different in different communities. If you're looking, I, I lived in Lancaster um, for 30 years. But, I, but since then, we have a, I, I had to move away to get clients in Lancaster because you're never an expert in your own backyard, um, for those who found out. Um, but for those of, that, those of you who know Lancaster, um, Lancaster and York's divided by the Susquehanna River. It might as well be the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> you don't cross. Columbia. Uh, is on one side and Wrightsville on the other, and frankly, you can't get people to go across the bridge to work. Okay. In Lancaster, when we started to work with this health agency, Craigslist was horrible in Lancaster. Indeed, was 95% of where their candidates come. Literally, a mile away in York, it was flipped. Craigslist was very effective in parts of York County, and indeed was pretty good. But we wouldn't have known that if we hadn't used both and tracked it. 
So basically, you have to use all these things. Okay. Here's the fun. Here's the problem with current processes. And again, you can apply the same principles if you don't understand social media, network, blogging, content management, video, imaging, what's working, what's not. I can talk about recruiting. This is what I do day in and day out. It's basically you get a 0.2% success rate. And the problem isn't the marketing. The problem is no metrics. You don't understand what's working and what not, what's not working, and you kind of throw everything in this big funnel, but as it goes through this process, there's a drop-off rate. The abandonment rate in recruiting is horrible. Horrible. Because people, again, see the app or this design on it as a job description on a, on a PC, and the viewer is looking at it on a five-inch mobile screen. Huge disconnect. Second part of it is engage. Not only does it have to be visible, but it has to have good content. That's where video, uh, that's where images help, endorsements. Not only do you want reviews from your customers, you want reviews from employees who work there. It's a 30-second video. Take a, your, I, your, your iPhone or your Android and do have a, a selfie of why they like to work for your company. People are researching companies Again, just as in consumer behavior, going up to Amazon, reading the reviews, you don't think it's happening with your employee, with potential candidates. So you need to engage them. It needs to be mobile friendly. <coughs> 90, this is how bad it is. And again, this affects some of you because some of your products and services in other areas are doing the same thing. 90% of millennials, and this is pretty consistent, are using a mobile phone to search for product services and especially recruiting. It's beyond that. Everyone I talk to says, oh, they're in a doctor's office, they're at lunch, they're sitting down, having a bad day at work, looking for a job, where does it start? They don't say, well, I'm gonna wait till I get home at night and I have some free time, like everybody has free time at night. They're not gonna sit down at their desk doing it, they're gonna pull out their phone and they're gonna do a search. They're stuck in traffic, people do it in commuting. So they do it all the time. That number is really high. This is from one of the studies. But if 50% of, of company sites were mobile ready, it'd be, I mean, we, they'd be in a much better condition. Most of the reports that are coming out that 20% of Fortune 500s are mobile ready. That the, that your, that the site is, itself is, view, is viewable from your, your smartphone. Most companies are not there yet, and if they are, the career sites are definitely not, even if they're products and services, because most career sites are an afterthought. Here's the problem. If you knew, if you were the CEO, and many of you are in your companies, and you knew you just launched a campaign, and you spent all this money and time and effort, and only 1%, 1.5% of the people who started an application finished it, because they couldn't view it, or it took too much time, or they had a pinch and squeeze, or the fill in, the, it was too long, you'd, you'd fire the company or fire the marketing department. Yet when it comes to recruiting, this is how it's handled all the time. Okay. So now we're to the A, okay, a plot. How long it takes, just like everything else, if it takes too long to fill out the form, People are going to abandon the process. Okay. About 10 questions, 10 to 15 questions is what you want. Initially, people said, yeah, but we have a five-page application. <coughs> we, need, we have a very specialized approach. We need people who are qualified. You need people to apply before you can, you can screen them. If, if they're not applying, it doesn't really matter. So the abandonment rate is huge. What you need to do is look at your job application. Look at, if you need a resume, ask for the resume. Don't ask for a resume and a job application. If you don't need their last three employers because you're gonna reject them if they don't have a college degree with two years of experience, you don't need who their last three employers. Get the basis information. Ask 10 to 15 questions maximum because the dropout rate is three times higher 15 minutes, 15 questions is the maximum. 
10 is better. Just another view of how quickly people leave your site. Abandonment abandon is huge. Here's the next problem. How many, how many people have actually applied for a position recently? Okay. Nobody. Everybody start up your employee. Okay. <laughs> a lot of times the, the audience is, is a little bit different. The reality is, is people who have applied for a position, the, the thing that they hate the most is they never hear from the company. You don't do that to your customers, I hope. Don't do it to your, your internal customers, which is your employees. The reality is, you have to have a conversation. I wrote an article, and it's probably one of the more popular articles I've written. Um, it's called Ghosting. You just disappear. You just, people apply for a job, they get a thank you for your application. They, they, never, they never hear anything more, they don't know where they are in the process, they don't know if it was received, zero. It doesn't take much to stand out because the competition's pretty bad when it comes to recruiting. But everybody says, yeah, but nobody's doing it. Well, that's why you have to do it. That's why you should. And a lot of this could be automated, and that's why I fell in love with Jeff's um, mind me. Because again, it's very, very easy for, for people to set up responses like that. So you have to have conversation. You gotta communicate often. And this is what you're gonna hear from Jeff in a few minutes, is this is where it fits. But there's more than uses. It's not just, hey, apply for the job. If I'm interested, sign up for a text, and we'll send you notices when there's other job openings. We'll send you notices um, at the next step. Here's where we are with your, in the process. We're evaluating resumes this week. Hope we'll be back with you in another week. But beyond that, there's other things you can do. Send an interview reminder. If you don't want to do it by text, do it by email. We're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. This goes over. Candidates like this. Send directions. I think this is a great idea, is, and especially on text. In the morning, I will get an email from some businesses to say, or if I have an appointment or a meeting somewhere, that traffic is light on 22. Where traffic's heavy on 22, plan some extra minutes. You, using text messages and, and email for some very, very simple things is just very, very dramatic. And hire, we're not gonna go into this, but ultimately, hiring starts way before you make the job offer, and it also extends way after the job offer, because hiring is onboarding. <coughs> People leave company, to hire somebody and then have them leave, is very, very expensive, but it's a big problem. So the reality is, is, is hiring is a, a, a bigger process. Uh, the core part of our business is we do a lot of pre-employment testing, how I got into the recruiting aspect and, and providing software for the recruiting aspect to help automate that funnel, okay, was because people said, oh, we'd love to hire people, but we can't find enough good ones. Okay. So the reality is, is, okay, how can we use that technology? How can we use the same process to not only Find, not only screen those people, but also to uh, find them faster. Okay. So, the analogy, or the acronym. Reach, you have to throw out a wide net. Engage, you have to market, you have to basically engage the client, have them interactive. Uh, they have to apply. Remember the application process, getting them to your site's only one thing, getting them to actually apply, purchase, buy is another. You have to stay in conversation, collect their names, let them know what's going on, let them know future openings, send them articles that might help them improve the process. It's not just about you. Help them interview better. Give them ideas what it's like to work for the company, but also just how can they improve their career. And then also, obviously, have a good hiring process in place. Okay. We'll throw out the questions. Um, if you text to, what's the... Yeah, if you actually text to the number, which is 27, I don't have it up there. Um, you, and just use IRA, very simple. Um, I wrote an ebook. it's a white paper, it's kind of an overview of this whole thing. If you also text to that and you like the slides, um, I'll send you copies of the slides. Um, I write at least three to five articles a week. Some of them go into local the business journal, uh, but all of them are online and blogs and the newsletter, and so you can keep in touch and lots of uh, kind of free advice. But uh, if anybody has any questions, I'd uh, entertain them here or feel free to, to do that offline. <coughs>